Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law was proposed by Charles Coulomb, who was a French physicist, and actually experimentally studied the magnitude of the forces that existed between two charged particles. And he did this empirically, meaning he actually conducted observations with the use of a torsional balance. He found out that if you have a charge, let's say Q1, and another charge, let's say Q2, Q1 will be repelled by Q2. This is the force exerted by 1 on 2. This is the force exerted by 2 on 1. Let's say the distance separating the charges is R. Coulomb experimentally determined that F 1, 2, which is the same as F, 2, 1, was proportional to the product, the magnitude of the product between the charges, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance separating them. This means that the force the size of the force between two charges is equal to a constant multiplied by Q1, Q2, all divided by R squared. Now, the constant K is known as the Coulomb's constant and is equal to 8.99 times 10 raised to the power 9 newton meter squared divided by coulomb squared it is worthwhile for you to know that k is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught which means that epsilon naught which stands for the permittivity of free space will be equal to 1 over 4 pi K. If you do your calculations, it will end up being 8.85 times 10 to the power minus 12 Coulomb squared Newton meter squared. Let's look at the vector form of Coulomb's law. So if we have two charges, Q1, Q2, let the position vector of Q1 be R1, and let the position vector of Q2 be R2, then the displacement vector from Q1 to Q2, this is R12. So if you look at this diagram, you will see that R1 plus R12 will be equal to R2. This means that R12 is equal to R2 minus R1, where R12 simply is a position vector pointing from Q1 to Q2. R cap 1, 2 is equal to R12 bar divided by R12. This represents a unit position vector from Q1 to Q2. Q1 is positively charged. Q2 is positively charged, which means that Q1 will be repelled by Q2. So the force experienced 
by Q2 is given by F12 and the force experienced by Q1 is given by F21. So F12 is just the force on 2 by 1 and F21 is the force on 1 by 2. So the vector form of Coulomb's law therefore can be written as F12 to be equal to K Q1 Q2 divided by R12 squared R12 cap or F12 is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 divided by R12 squared R12 cap Remember that R cap is equal to R12 bar divided by R12. This therefore means that F12 is going to be equal to K Q1 Q2 divided by R12 cubed R12 bar. This is another way of expressing the force between two charges where k is just 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught and epsilon naught is a constant known as the permittivity of free space the permittivity of free space. Now this brings the question, what happens if you have more than two charges? If you have more than two charges, in order to calculate the electrostatic force experienced by a charge due to several charges, we employ what we call the principle of superposition or better still the superposition principle take for example let's say you have a charge here q1 q2 q3 q4 and a charge here q5 you want to calculate the force experienced by Q5 due to the presence of 1, 2, 3, and 4. To simplify the calculation, let's say all these charges are positively charged. This means that Q1 will experience a force in this direction. This is the force asserted by 1 on 5. We'll experience a force in that direction. This is the force asserted by 4 and 5. It will experience a force in this direction. This is the force asserted by 2 and 5. As well as it will experience a force in this direction. This is the force by 3 and 5. So you've got to realize that the in the charge, the resultant force acting on Q5 is just the sum of the forces due to the individual charges. This means that the force on 5 will be equal to F15 plus F25 plus F35 plus 
F4-5. Generally, this would mean that F I O F G is equal to the sum of I equal to one up to N of F I G. This right here defines what we call the superposition principle. So recall one F one two is equal to K Q one Q two divided by R12 squared, R12 cap, which is the same as K, Q1, Q2, divided by R12 cube, R12 bar. Two, if you have several charges, then F, J bar, will be equal to the sum of i equal to 1 and f i j which is going to be equal to f 1 j bar plus f 2 j bar plus f 3 j bar and so on and so forth onto f n j bar this the second statement is the principle of superposition and the first statement is just Coulomb's law thank you so much